These people cannot be serious. We're going to come back to this tweet from the Shagsworth that says, no one has ever declared with any level of seriousness that there needs to be a white-only space in gaming. So this tweet and a tweet from Boogie2988 is what sparked me to make this video, to dig in to the demographics and find the real information about gaming so I could present it to you guys in a video. And in order for me to debunk this and show how ridiculous this talking point is, we have a lot to get through before we get back to it. Yeah, who would have thought providing context and nuance to this conversation could debunk all of the nonsense that people are saying regarding this topic? Now, before we go any further, if you go on to enjoy this content, this video, the stuff that I'm making, and you want to join the revolution and support the change on YouTube, you can do so by subscribing, liking, and leaving a comment down below. YouTube likes to funnel and pipeline misinformation, disinformation, really awful videos to the top of the search feature when you're looking up anything within any of the fandoms. So if you want to dismantle that, we have to do it from the inside. So we're going to jump into that pipeline and break it apart. If you want to be a part of that and be a part of that change, subscribe now and support the content. Thank you so much. So unless you're a gamer that's been hiding under a rock over the last few weeks, you know about Gamergate 2, Sweet Baby Inc., Black Girl Gamers, all of this drama surrounding diversity and gaming and all of the arguments that are being made. They're all over the place, but they sort of stem back to the fact that uh, there seems to be this push for diversity in media that goes against the idea that the target demographic that is buying the content are straight white men. So the idea is that these gaming companies should only be making content for that largest demographic, uh, which speaks to representation. They're arguing for representation, which is weird because they argue against it in every other instance. But when they feel any sort of like momentum for diversity in something, all of a sudden they understand what representation means and they get upset about it. And they have a lot of stuff to say uh, in regard to that. If you're like a, a black person, a woman, a queer person, or, you know, a black queer woman and any, any combination of those things moving into a space, trying to, you know, enjoy this content and, and be and contribute to this content in any meaningful way, you're deemed a danger and a harm to the content itself. Uh, and this is the argument they've been making. So let's sort of dismantle that. First, I'm going to read Boogie's tweet. Now, Boogie2988 is someone that is well-known within the gaming community. If you've been around for any amount of time, you know Boogie uh, and all the drama surrounding him and his character Francis and all the stuff with Twitch and all the other things, the documentary about him. He's well-known in the gaming community. So when he speaks out, even when it's engagement farming, which is clearly what he's been doing here, even when he does that, trades pick it up, outlets pick it up, people start picking up, it becomes a talking point. And he's contributing to that conversation. And he knows that. So it's irresponsible for him to put out stuff that is going to stoke some sort of uh, uh, division between the communities strictly to engage for him and make money off of it. But he doesn't care. We all know that Boogie doesn't care. He's made it very obvious that he does this for that reason. But this did spark a conversation. And this is what made me want to look in to the numbers. So let's read this tweet. And then we're going to take a look at some hard numbers here. It says, uh, Boogie2988 goes, okay, hot take. I mean this one too, no walking it back. I did a little research and as far as I could tell, the majority of video games are still purchased by white men. Okay, fine. Still, that means nothing. Like just because that is the community that is buying the games, that doesn't mean that that community doesn't want to see diversity in gaming. Unless you're arguing that white people don't want to see black people, that that you know white men don't want to see women portrayed, you know, actually doing things that women would do. Unless you are arguing that point, then this actual you know, demographic thing doesn't matter. It doesn't matter unless that's the argument you're making. So he goes, even after 10 years of forced DEI representation, it didn't make a significant change in the demographic. Now, the only issue I have with that statement is the forced portion. I, I don't think anything is being forced. There are games out there. We, we know there are games out there that do not engage with cons with consultation firms. They have no reason to for one reason or another, maybe the, the people making the game are already representative of the diversity within the game and they don't need to reach out to people to help them with that. Uh, maybe it's a game that just doesn't require any uh, help from consultation. So saying forced seems a little ridiculous. If, if it was forced, every gaming company out there would be doing this and they're not. They're not all doing it. So you can't say it's forced when it's optional. Um, and I know there's an argument about, oh, they feel like they're being blackmailed and strong-armed or whatever. Ah, bullshit. There's no proof of that either. There's there's absolutely none of that. Actually, some of the people who were involved with having consultation firms have came out and said that that's just a false narrative. So there's no proof of that either. So anyways, he goes, if, so if you want to represent DEI stuff, fine. Go for it. But also make games that represent the people who actually buy your games as well. So he's arguing for representation. He literally says that. But also make games that represent 
the people who actually buy your games as well. So arguing for representation and Boogie's not the only person that said this, like this is, he's probably one of the largest people that have talked about this, but I see this as a talking point all over the place that representation matters when we're talking about straight white men, then it matters. Make sure you, you take care of the straight white man because that is the community that is buying the game. So you have to only think of them when you're making the games, you aren't allowed to do anything else at all. Um, which is the epitome of gatekeeping, to be completely honest. Like even making that talking point is the epitome of gatekeeping. We're talking about the entire gaming community. We're not talking about one group. We're talking about the entire gaming community. So let's take a look at a chart. I found a chart that breaks down the statistics for the demographics within gaming. And I want to explain to you why the argument that this forced DEI stuff is some insidious program that is coming in and taking things away from white people, white men, straight men, that that sort of argument is nonsense. Because what Boogie says here is after 10 years of this, it hasn't made a significant change. So if that is true, what are you arguing about? All right, this is some information from Zipia.com, and it sort of breaks down the different demographics of uh, types of gamers. We're going to look at a few of these and then talk about how that applies to the DEI stuff. So starting out, it says gamer gender st uh, statistics, and it goes male is 74.6% of gaming and females are 25.4% of gamers. So men make up like 75%, women make up like 25% of gaming. Okay, so right there, we're looking at that and going, hey, uh, this is the vast majority of people that are playing the games are men. So that would make women the marginalized community within the gaming bubble, meaning that they would need the, the push and the help for representation more than anyone else because they're primarily viewed through the lens of men gamers. So in order for women who are, are, who are playing games to see themselves outside of that, there needs to be some sort of consultation, some sort of push within the gaming community to make sure that those kinds of things are addressed because it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter, honestly, that men make up the vast majority of gaming. If women are involved with gaming at all, and they want to see themselves represented more authentically, they have every right to, even if they only make up a quarter of that bubble, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. But this also shows that there is no threat of women overtaking gaming as it stands right here. Let's go a bit further and look at the breakdown by year, starting in 2010 all the way up to 2021. So in 2010, roughly 64% of gamers were male, whereas 36% were female. If you look at 2021, it has changed to 75% of gamers being male and 25% being female. So if anything, the DEI stuff has actually brought more male gamers into gaming over the last 10 years or up till 2021. So if anything, all of this argument that it is pushing men away, that men don't want to play games anymore, this is showing that that's not true. All right, so now let's look at the breakdown of race or ethnicity by year, starting at 2010 to 2021. Now, as of 2010, 83% of gamers identified as white. In 2021, 78% of gamers identified as white. So not a big shift there. Um, at all between those numbers. They fluctuated a lot. As you can see, it's gone up, it's gone down. Uh, the amount of gamers that identify as Black or African American started out at 3.77% uh, back in 2010, and it is around 3.24% in 2021. So not a big shift. Um, there's a couple of bumps in here where it went up to like 4.15%, 4.30%. Uh, Asian is 4.83% back in 2010, down to 4.07% in 2021. Whereas we see a, a big increase in Hispanic or Latino gamers going from 6.4% up to 9.82%. This is the biggest shift is in Hispanic or Latino gamers. So what that tells me is there isn't a big shift in most of the communities in terms of the background, ethnicity, race of, of gamers, other than from Hispanic and Latino gamers going up in their demographic of playing games. So again, has DEI had a massive impact on that? It doesn't look like it. It looks like it's been marginalized uh, in terms of impact, except for with Hispanic and Latino gamers, which I don't know if it's the DEI stuff that could account to that specifically, because if you think if it did, it would account for all of the other communities as well. So I don't know. It's sort of an outlier. It's up in the air. But still, the vast majority of people playing the games, almost 80% of that is white people. 
So this makes Boogie's tweet here even more odd to me. So the bottom line says, but also make games that represent the people who actually buy your games as well. As you can see, there's been no significant shift in the white male demographic uh, of gaming. There's not a significant shift. We're not seeing anything. There's no massive landslide of like white men walking away from gaming. It's just not happening. So this idea that DEI has come in and taken something away from straight white male gamers, it's just a fallacy. It's not real. It's not a real thing. Um, I'm going to look for even more recent numbers, but I know sometimes when it comes to large statistics like that, it takes a little while for them to get that information. But we're going to look into it and see. I, I want to try and follow up on that a little bit more. But it makes this whole argument feel very forced and just unnecessary. Because if all of this is true, we looked at the numbers, we're seeing what Boogie is saying, the people in the community are arguing that, that gaming is made for white men and they should be the ones represented in media. If all of that is true and we're not seeing a shift in any of, of that, then what is the point in attacking companies like Sweet Baby Inc. or attacking people who want more authentic viewpoints in their games? What is the point in doing that if it's not for oppression? If you know for a fact now that those numbers represent the, the gaming community, then you'll see that going after marginalized people for wanting a few games to have authentic representation in it comes across as bigotry because it doesn't serve any other purpose. You're trying to subtract something that isn't having a significant shift in the people who are actually playing the games. It is only allowing a more authentic experience for the people who are already playing the games. And so finally, we return to this tweet from the Shagsworth that says, no one has ever declared with any level of seriousness that there needs to be a white-only space in gaming. And this is in reference to the Black Girl Gamers community, a community of Black Girl Gamers, just like any other sub-community within the gaming community that caters to a specific niche or a specific group who doesn't feel represented as the whole, in the whole community. And the reason why is there's no necessity for a white only space in gaming when the audience, the vast majority of the audience that is engaging with games is 80% white men. 80% of the audience is that demographic. So it is unnecessary for them to have their own space because I can almost guarantee you that there are communities within the gaming community that are filled with straight white men that aren't called white men gamers because it doesn't have to be. A flip of the coin, you're going to end up with a large majority of the people in those communities that are just straight white guys. Just by sheer numbers, that's what it's going to be. So that's why other marginalized communities like black girl gamers or gay gamers or trans gamers or whatever community you're a part of that wants a, a little separate bubble where they can discuss things about their community within that bubble, why it is a necessity for those communities to have those spaces and not for straight white men to have spaces. It's, it's, it just doesn't, it's, there's no need for it. What in gaming would be discussed by straight white guys that isn't already in the conversation to begin with other than bigotry? What would it be? What conversations would straight white men have to have about gaming that doesn't already dominate the gaming landscape? There isn't any, there's none. Every conversation that's had about gaming when it comes to whether it be diversity in gaming or sexy girls in gaming or whatever the conversation is, it is always the talking point at the top of the list. It is the one in the number one slot that everybody is talking about. That's why we're talking about this right now. That's why we're having this conversation right now, because all of the white guys in that space are complaining about it and talking about it. Even though these other sub communities like black girl gamers have existed for years. Gay gaming has existed for years. These are communities that have been around for a long time, but no one ever talked about them until the white guys started talking about them. That is the reason why it is unnecessary for a white-only space in gaming. It's just not needed.